You are all weirdos. Weird science is the revolution. Weird science is the revolution. Hello, everybody, and welcome to a new show. Me and Gray are up to. Gray, what's up? Hey, it's great to be here. Do you know what, Jim? I'm feeling really ganky, even though it's quite late on a Friday night for me. Yeah, and it's very early for me since we live opposite sides of the world. And I don't know if I feel ganky after reading this issue, though I like it. It's not really an exciting type deal. It's more of a, well, it's a horror. It's a horror book through and through, right? It's a horror book and it's a slow burn, isn't it? It's classic Jeff Lemire and Andrea Sorrentino because, Jim, you were saying that you've read Gideon Falls, yeah, before. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, that's all of the horror stuff that I've read from them. I haven't. And this is a connected universe type deal. I'll say it's the Bone Orchard Mythos, tenement number one. And this Bone Orchard Mythos is supposedly going to be a full connected horror universe. It ended up starting with a graphic novel. Then they have a mini series, and now we're back to the second one with this tenement. And the things that came out, the first thing was Passageway and then 10,000 Black Feathers, number one, leading into this tenement, number one. And what I've read, because me and you, neither of us has read any of the other stuff, right? No, unfortunately. But what a great name, 10,000 Black Feathers. I want to go and read it like right now. Yeah, that is pretty cool. And I do really like Jeff Lemire and Andrea Sarantino. So I usually will at least give something a try. I actually hadn't heard of this. I guess I wasn't paying attention. Uh, but sometimes the indie stuff does slip through the cracks for me. So I'm I'm telling you, I'm with you. I might have to go back and read it because this mm-hmm. was something, though, they are separate but connected. So it's not like we're not getting a lot of information. We we get what we get here, which is pretty good. It ends up being, a like you said, a slow burn, though that you're going to go into this and not really get the full idea of the story. It's more of a mystery by the end. That's right, yeah. It's a, it's an issue. One, it's a lot of setup, of course, in which you kind of expect it. And I was trying to check the page page count in this, Jim. There's quite a lot of pages. We're talking over 30 of story, aren't we, Then a few extra like text pages. So, yeah, but even with all those pages, you're not sure like what actually happens in this issue. No, it is pretty crazy. But it is also a quick read, even with it mm. being – you know, this oversized one shot. And just to point out, it's three ninety nine. And so if you're wondering, hey, should I check this out? If you have any interest in check, it's worth it. It's well worth three ninety nine. Definitely. Yeah. But I'm gonna read the solicit. Obviously we also said the credits already. It's written by Jeff Lemire with art by Andrea Sorrentino and it says mini series premiere from the Eisner winning creative team behind Gideon Falls, Primordial and Ten Thousand Black Feathers. Comes the biggest and most essential project yet in the bold and ambitious new shared universe of the Bone Orchard mythos. In this extra-length first issue, Jeff Lemire and Andrea Sorrentino bring you the story of seven residents in a building and the dark secrets that bind them together, beginning with a death that feels much more sinister than natural. Tenement is the newest entry into the Bone Orchard mythos from Lemire and Sorrentino. The universe features self-contained graphic novels, and limited series about the horrors waiting to be discovered within the Bone Orchard. And you do get that feel right away. You end up having this kid, this main kid, Isaac, who does start seeing things that if you have even just read Gideon Falls or anything in this whole mythos, you you get it. You know, you end up seeing some of those classic things that Andrea Sorrentino has drawn throughout all of their stuff, which is pretty cool. But again, like you said, It brings up more mysteries and what's going on, what's real and whatnot. But what did you think of it overall? Overall, as you yeah, like you said, Jim, it is a very quick read, but I've actually gone back and read it like two this is my third reread now, third time to read it, and I'm picking up little details, little bits and pieces, you know, each time I go back. But what an opening. It's very, very basic. All we get are seven. There are seven of them. That much I am almost certain of. I like that play there, almost certain. Yeah, yeah, and I like the idea that I, it's one of those things, maybe I'm a dummy, but you do have an overall narration, right? You have yeah. this narrator, you're not really sure who it is, who and it then is, you right. realize by the end who it is, and then something big happens to them, and then you wonder, like, okay, is this going to continue with that narration? It's, a, it's very odd the way that it goes, but I'll tell you, I read it twice. The first time I read it, I was completely confused. I mean, there's a lot that gets thrown at you, even though when you read it the second, I don't know if you thought this. 
the first time through, I'm like, man, there's so much getting thrown at me. Then I read it the second time and I'm like, you know what? There's not that much here, but what you get, once you can put your, you know, wrap your mind around, you actually do get some really good character work very, very quickly. And seven characters, and there's a page at the beginning that gives a rundown of their names. Now, I'm not going to tell you that I could tell you all of their names, but I ended up knowing most of them. But when I went down that little, you know, side vertical panel with all the, I knew all their stories, at least what's basically set up here to get at least an idea of the characters and even start trying to put some things together. So I think that they succeeded in that. And it's not just Jeff Lemire. It is that art by Andrea Sorrentino. Which is, if you haven't seen Audrey Sorrentino's art, you said before we started, very photorealistic, very much like looks like modeled off of things, yeah. but in that way that it's really good. He works well with shadows, things like that, a lot of facial expressions. And it's funny, like some of the facial expressions that Andrea Sorrentino, a lot of artists will give you like the crazy ones, like somebody mad and yelling or somebody, you know, crying. But there's like weird ones like confusion and there's a Mm. lot in this like, you know, confusion or somebody trying to and you really get it through the art and him and Jeff Lemire working together. They know how to work together. You know, there's never a point where you sit there and like, man, I wish the art would be able to tell more. Oh, no, absolutely. Yeah, no, you're totally right. I'm just I'm not a real big horror comic fan. So when you get into something, what I do realize that I'm not. Like a, a jump, it's weird to have jump scare horror in comics anyway, but. <laughs> I know, Jim, does that even work? Can you pull off a jump scare in a comic book? No. And the funny thing is, this is where me and my man Eric were talking at one point. That's why me and him don't think things like alien work a lot of times or things like that because you rely on that. the yeah, tension yeah. and the jump scare. And even as Eric said, with an alien and stuff like, you also need the soundtrack. If you're not getting. The music and the build up and the, it, it's really hard, but something that like this. That is a this, huge lack. Yeah, the miss. Yeah, they're missing the music. Yeah, that's a great point. You really do need that, don't you? Need the kind of, not just the music, the sound effects as well. This kind of build up attention. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So when you get something like this though, and it's psychological horror and mm. supernatural, that does work for me. And I think that I really like the idea. I like the idea of Andrea Sorrentino where he does crazy layouts at points, and he does things like. At one point where you're going through the cinematic little plays here, I think are a little subtle, but you end up there in a tenement. I mean, that's the big deal, Mm. right? They all live in this thing. And you kind of go through rooms through the vents at points like you end up where you're in a, a room. Then you go up to the vent, come out the other vent. It's very cinematic in it, Jim, like you were saying. Very, very visual, yeah. And you do end up starting to see connections between the characters. But you tell me. Like, what did we really get from one issue? Well, this is it. What like you were saying, it's, um, to be honest, I think he set up the characters so well in just the well, 30 pages of story. Um, putting seven characters in one book, that is a that is a mean feat to actually give them, you know, a bit of a personality. But, Jim, what happens by the end is, as far as I know, we see some kind of freaky picture of, uh, I don't know, some weird figure that this little kid is seeing. And then that kid... He gets a key. That's he about gets it. A key. So there's a character in this that seems like a nice guy, but you never know with things like that. And I think that this plays off. There's been movies like this where oh, yeah. you'll end up even like a Main Street type deal where, okay, everybody's playing this role here, but you never know what they're like behind closed doors. And who's <laughs> up to this and who's up to that. But at the end, the one character does seem like they, they may have died they're sick something has gone on and i'm not so sure that the whole play is a mystery to figure out who did that or no. if that's just part of the deal but at the end like you said we have this little kid isaac who ends up getting a key and that's really what happens but i was interested because of going through each of these characters and whether they're not all likable i mean no. i'm not even thinking that anybody but maybe two characters are likable and one might be dead by the end well, Jim, that's what's so cool about it, isn't it? Yeah. They're, they're realistic. You, you get that kind of flawed, everyday, average, you know, Joes, which I really appreciate about that. And as you were saying before, Sorrentino, he draws them so well. They're not overly exaggerated. You know, they've not got crazy expressions. 
they look like ordinary people. The way that Jeff Lemire plays a lot of things like this and, and a lot of stories like it, it's going to, in my mind, come down to the idea where we start off and like, oh, man, we see a little connections with some. I mean, one mm. guy's a drug dealer and one of the other character comes for drugs. But the others are just they live in a building together. Doesn't yeah. mean they're connected, but I think they're connected more because of this building, because of this tenement. We're going to have to see how that all plays, because, of course, all this isn't just, hey, you know, Gray, you live in apartment 1B and I live. There's some other <laughs> things going on here. I mean, and this kid seems to be seeing some things that are supernatural. So I have to see how this all goes on. But I think one of the big lines is when. This guy, Felix, who yeah. seems like a nice enough guy, but one guy has a problem with him. This Gary has a problem with him because he works nights and he's saying he's making it doesn't look like a guy who's making a lot of noise, but we'll see. No. But he says to this little kid, hey, what's your name, Isaac? You know, names are important. Names have power like that whole play. That seems very important in this. It does. I was getting flashbacks to Grant Morrison there. And Invisible That's what was I was too. <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> Names have power. Or even Constantine. It's like a John exactly, Constantine yeah, line, that, it isn't is. it? So that gives you that supernatural play. And I like the, mm. we said, a cinematic flow. But the book really does, like, it kind of ebbs and flows between these characters. There's not really a time where it's like, later on, two hours late. It just, as things go on, one person opens a door. The next person comes out and the story continues in that flow, which I think is really, really cool. But it does seem as you're going through this, at least that this Isaac, he's the center of it. So him walking yeah. around, it's kind of following, not always, but it's kind of following him and he's seeing things and whatnot. And most some of the things just seem like regular Walk a day, Joe stuff. It's not oh, even yeah, crazy. Oh, yeah, totally. But, but some, Jim, some don't, do they? There's a really freaky pace that's caught my eye where you've got, okay, you've got the narration saying, soon they will see what I have seen, his face. And then later on, we get the um, the musician who's gone to see the drug dealer, and she's like, oh, my God, you know, I, I saw something. I saw something terrible. But it's not explained, is it, Jim? That's what I love about no. it. It's not over-explained. You know, you're not told what's going on. It's left to, to your and our imagination. It is. And when you're doing this, she's even like, she's looks like she's a bassist, I think it looked like. I think, yeah, she is, yeah. And she's an artist, too. And she's sculpturing a face. And I'm like, okay, that seems oh, like yeah. it's connected. But, you know, you have certain things. One guy, he ends up, his wife's sick. And he isn't able to pay the bills, probably because he's paying a lot of bills for her being sick and he's doing. But it, it, it's never like a thing like I'm like, OK, that guy's going to go. Okay, it's just walk a day deal. And I think that it'll get deeper and deeper. But this first issue is a lot of setup, but really good character work, I thought. Uh, but yeah, what do you think overall? Is this something you're gonna follow would you buy it i am and I'm, I'm sorry about the sirens in the background jim it's um it's atmospheric <laughs> atmospheric sound effects <laughs> yes, for this um, but yeah as you say um it is a lot of setup but um it pulled me in jeff lemire as we know from uh, the past from reading gideon falls he's so good at like building up characters but what caught my eye as well not just the um the story but at the end we've got andrea sorrentino the artist and he's saying he's basically talking about what kind of horror they both like and Jim, what I like is they, um, they're not big fans of violent, you know, gore, shock horror. They're more into the mind or the psychological horror, Lovecraftian style, which is a big thing in um, Japanese horror movies. I'm, I'm a kind of fan of that. What do you think about that? I, I think it's a, a good play. I think that that translates to comics a lot better. Yes, me too. With Andrea Sorrentino's art and Jeff Lemire writing and the character work, he can really play up the psychological horror like that, the Lovecraftian supernatural stuff. I think plays out so much better. So I think that it's a good play. And yeah, that's the thing. I'm not a horror fan. I said that not even movie horror. And so when I read mm -hmm. this, though, I'm intrigued because y you get just enough of the characters to start to understand a little. Like I said, I don't know that I like them, but I want to see what goes on. You end up having a cliffhanger that confuses you. And then also this <laughs> key. Like, what's the key about? I mean, right there is something I want to find out. So, yeah, I think that I am into this. And I, I guess we can give scores. What score would you give it? Okay, it's a strong opening issue. I'm going to give this um, eight. Yeah, a straight I'm gonna eight, go eight out eight of five. ten. I'm a little oh, more nice. positive than you for like once. It. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to go eight, five. And I really do think that if you like 
Jeff Lemire, if you like Andrea Sorrentino, if you like them combined, or you like a psychological horror, like I said, it's three ninety nine and it's oversized and it's well worth it. It's great price. Great price. And I do think that it's one of those that and we were talking, how are we gonna talk about this? You can't go panel to panel with this anyway. Because when no. it, some of the stuff is just it, it seems mundane while you're reading it. But I think that that's kind of the atmosphere of it. And it starts to get to you by the end. You realize, okay, I want to see what's going on with that, you know, Tanya. What's she up to? And what's this guy? And what's that? I think that it works really, really well by the end. So I I recommend it to anybody who's even remotely interested, especially if you look at the, you know, the visuals in our videos. So and this is something that we're going to end up doing. We're going to do this on both of our channels. But each of us is going to edit the video a little differently and stuff like that. Not that it's going to be that much different, but I think that that'd be kind of a cool way to play this so that we can do it each Friday. And we're just going to pick a book. This one we just yeah. picked, right? We, we had no idea. We just say, hey, let's do that. Well, Jim, I'm really glad like that them. you said, like, you know, should we go for an indie book? Because I'm like you, I, I do cover a little bit of indie, but I'm mainly focused on Marvel and DC. So this has been great to do this. And I'm really glad to hear you enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah, I did too. I'm, I'm in. One of the things I'm glad that we picked this is because me and you focus mainly on Marvel and DC, you don't get something like this. But I think that this will be cool. We'll, we'll broaden our horizons. That's me what too. we're doing. And yeah. I had to have some people ask, you know, to do more indie stuff. Uh, so this would be cool. I asked you to do it on a whim. We picked this book. So here we go. Hopefully people enjoy it and we'll continue doing it each Friday. So thanks, everybody. Thank you for joining me, Gray. And I guess that's it. I will lead us out. Uh, You always lead us out of the Morrison stuff (laughs) on your channel. So I will lead us out. But thanks, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this. Let us know in the comments below. Tell us if you like the idea, whatnot, and even suggest some books each week that we do. That'd be awesome because we're up for anything. Uh, there, There you go. So thanks, everybody. Thanks, Greg. And we'll talk to you all later. Catch you later. You are all weirdos. Weird science is the revolution. Weird science is the revolution.